Hello beauties. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We are going to continue and uh, put together project number three and project number four from the November 2023 stamp of the month kit. So we're just going to kind of kill two birds with one stone and knock the video series out just a little bit quicker. This month we're going to go ahead and start with project number three. I have to say out of all of the cards, these two are pretty closely tied for my favorites. Um, I, I love both of them and um, I, I don't really know why there's just a really great balance of um, color and it's like just the right amount of sparkle. <laughs> Not too much, <laughs> just enough. I really, really like them. So we're going to go ahead and put them together. Now, a lot of these steps I have done ahead of time. Um, we did not do anything ahead of time on projects number one and two. So if you guys want to go in and um, watch the stenciling, watch the uh, blending brush um, over the glitter paper and adding the texture and um, the dimension uh, on top of the leaves, go Go in and be sure to watch video number one, um, or pardon me, the video for project number one and project number two, and you guys will be caught up to speed. But just to go ahead and make the others in the series a little bit quicker, um, we um, I'm, I went ahead and I did that before I turned the camera on. So we're going to move to project number three first. I'm going to set project um, number four up here out of the way, and we'll attempt to not, you know, d spill an ink pad or something on it. So we're going to go right ahead and get to working on this one. Now, like I said, a lot of this is just going to be assembly um, because we're just repeating many of the steps that we did in the first video. So um, I am going to go ahead and I usually do this with our card vases. They have a great score line, um, but many times the score line is not in the middle of the card. <laughs> I don't, it's like the machine that creates them is, you know, off just a hair. So I always will re score it um, just to make sure that it is directly in the crease. Now, remember I told you guys that a lot of your sentiments, I did a lot of that welding um, of those millions and millions of little tiny circles inside Cricut. So you guys have pre uh, cut out sentiment pieces that it, are going to be inside your kit. So you don't have to worry about cutting them. Remember this pre-cut kit um, comes shipped directly to your door as a gift from me when your order is $75 during the month of November. So um, what's fun about that is you guys can use it not only for I do and cut extras when you have your mats out go ahead and fill up a whole 12 by 12 you know sheet of white cardstock and take your extras and just slip them down there in your stamp envelope and so you'll have them for next time and you don't have to get your Cricut out that way so the for the friendship we share sentiment is already stamped with black ink and um, that is already ready to go. So we've got this one that we actually don't need. I'll just put it right back in my stamp, um, my little stamp uh, envelope. Now I went ahead and I blended my leaves. I added the, the um, embossing folder to the leaves. I added the... Um, blending brush with the, the desert rose ink on top of the glitter paper. Um, I have taken care of the stenciling for the mink cardstock and I'm going to show you guys which one I used there. So this is going to give you a better look other, um, you know, instead of the shiny stencil that's a little hard to see through. But the one that I used for this project number three is this one right here. And I used it much the same way as you saw in the first video where I just took the edge of it and lined up the edge, that middle, that little middle opening I just lined it up near the edge of my piece here and I just essentially inked one half of the tree and so I put um, one on the bottom right corner and one on the top left corner what I didn't do yet was run my little doodling pen around the outside of it so we're gonna do that really really quickly and then we'll continue on with the assembly part so this was an interesting color scheme I have to say I really love the way that it turned out but I do struggle and I know that I mentioned this in one of the first videos but I tend to struggle a little with mixing uh, shades of gray and shades of brown. They just feel like two different neutral kind of families and I'm not really sure how they should go together and how to kind of complement that. And so it's always a little challenging to me, but um, I feel like this really, really turned out quite well. Um, I am going to go ahead and we're going to um, kind of center this mink piece after we've done the stenciling and the doodling, both of which are optional. So um, don't worry if you are like, Suze, that's not my jam. I'm not doing that. That's okay. You don't have to. So we're going to center this and it's going to leave about a quarter of an inch border 
of that uh, pretty sage colored pattern paper showing. So then what we're gonna do, and you'll notice this little square of white daisy cardstock, I also ran that through my sunbeam embossing folder. And if you guys can't tell on that piece there, this is the sunbeam. You guys probably remember this from several catalogs back. It is still available on the website. So um, you can still get that, but that really uh, made a nice little bit of that, like we usually call it, that quiet texture, right? Little, little bit of background noise, okay? So that just kind of dressed up that white a little bit. Now what we wanna do is I wanna have three equal borders. So I am just kind of laying this here. So um, I'm kind of just visually kind of taking a peek so that all three of my top borders all match. And then that will help me know where to place my little wood grain piece of paper down here. So that is going to go directly underneath the white daisy piece. And so again, I'm laying the white down first because that helps me determine where this needs to be sitting. It's not really a certain measurement or anything like that. I just want it to provide the bottom edge of that white cardstock. That is just kind of the name of the game. So we are going to go ahead and now and place this one down directly on top of that wood grain piece. Okay, so now we have three equal borders and then it's um, kind of met down here with that little piece of the wood grain. So our little um, scrap of glitter is gonna go right down here on the bottom. Now, it's funny because I mentioned, um, I mentioned in one of the first videos that um, I created this fun little like square of glitter frames. So there's frames of different sizes kind of nestled together. And then on the inside, there was a frame that was split in two that we put on project one and two. And then the inside, there were these two little additional squares. And so I was kind of struggling, like, what am I going to do with them? And so I purposefully had to find a place for them just because it felt silly to like throw those middle pieces away and not include them in your kit. It just felt really silly. So I wanted to make sure that you guys um, had a way to use them. And so it was kind of a fun little way to take just like a little square of glitter and I I strung that out and used it on every single project. So all six of them um, have glitter, a part, you know, a component of that fun little frame. So again, guys, remember that um, you have the Cricut files now. So if you would like to go in and cut a bunch more of them, you can uh, because you have access to that file now. So um, what I'm going to do is the bottom, um, the big leaf here, we are going to put um, down with just regular um, Tombow adhesive. Um, I am just going to kind of sit that here for a second. We're not committing, right? That's what we always say. We don't want to smush down on it because once you smush down on foam tape, it does not like to move. Um, and so we can't reposition it. But what I'm going to do is I am going to put a little bit of foam tape on my small leaf so it will pop up off of the surface just a little bit because you guys know I love to do that. My cards are never flat. My pages are never flat. Um, in fact, I've made flat cards and pages before, um, but I pull them off and then put foam tape underneath things. Like I had to disassemble them and then reassemble them. So um, you can look far and wide and you're not gonna find a flat page or a flat card. Um, it's, yeah, it's just not my thing. I like to add the dimension and it doesn't bother me that I have to have an extra stamp and it doesn't bother me that my albums are fat and sassy because that's just kind of how I roll. So um, what we're doing is we're just kind of checking the positioning of these pieces. I want to make sure that they're all okay before I begin smushing things down. So my little leaf is going to go right about, let's see, here, okay? And so my big leaf, that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and commit to that. We're going to smush him down. We'll smush the little leaf down. Now let's add just a few of the foam tape squares to our sentiment here and like before you know it will be done um, we'll go ahead and let's see I, I usually do um, I'm pretty liberal with my foam tape unless I'm just really hurrying because I'm you know creating on camera I tend to rush a little bit then and put less on there um, but most of the time I I cover it pretty thick with foam tape I use, I use a lot of that um, in my artwork. And again, um, it's funny because some of you guys will listen to this and you'll be like, nope, not me, Suze. And I know, <laughs> I absolutely know that some of you guys just do not care for the dimension at all. And it's okay, we can still be friends. <laughs> it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add um, 
let's see, I guess we can go ahead and add it to the front of our card. Um, when I go ahead and I have my dimensional things built on the front of my card and I have not put it on my base yet, um, what I normally will do rather than turn this over and run the risk of crushing this with my tape runner, um, I will go ahead and put the um, tape runner just on the card base itself and then I will bring this over. So I can be a little bit more strategic and careful with where I'm pushing and what I am or am not um, wrecking, right? So I got a little bit of an overage here, which you guys know sometimes I cut that on purpose like that because um, I like to purposefully trim it off flush. Um, because many times you guys, you, you know what I'm talking about, you'll get pieces that maybe are a little bit too short or a little bit too long. And it drives me crazy to have those little, um, little spaces there. So I purposefully, when I'm able, I'll cut a piece a little too long just so I can cut it off flush. Um, because I'm just, I know that not every single piece will be absolutely exact, right? Because real human hands are cutting these, not a machine. So now we're gonna add just a few of these beautiful, 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 beautiful dots. I love them, you guys. They're the silver bell dots. Oh my gosh, I love them. They're so pretty. Um, the brown is my absolute favorite, um, but the silver is so pretty too, and the whites. It's like this beautiful iridescent, um, just, oh man, they're just, they're if, jo if dots could be joyful, yeah, they're just, beautiful. So I'm just kind of strategically um, scattering them out. You would have to know that when I created this project initially, um, I have to sit and think for a long time, where am I putting the dots so that they're most complementary to the focal parts of your card? Um, I'm just looking at the original now, so I don't have to sit and think. So you guys don't have to watch me um, work so tirelessly to figure out what I'm doing with them and where they're going, right? Because um, I'm just copying what I already did. But um, there is project number three in a um like a, a quick hop skip and a jump now let's go and work on project number four again like I this little guy is tied for my, my absolute favorite I love 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 it it's just beautiful it's like this perfect um it's this perfect mix of sparkle and shine. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bottom layer down first, and then we're gonna do a little bit of stamping in my very uncleaned uh stamping platform. So we have to go ahead and put the first layers on. I did go ahead and do a bit of st stenciling already. Like I told you guys, it's just to kind of speed it up a little bit. So I want to show you which of the stencils I use for this one because it's different. Um, so this is a fun little, like it really, if you um, put the entire thing together, it really does look like a Christmas tree. But again, we've only used a portion of it. So um, it doesn't really look Christmassy at all. We can totally pass for um, an autumn stencil you know on an autumn themed kit um because we didn't we didn't stencil the entire thing so i'm going to show you guys which one i used so it's this little guy right here okay and so again i just kind of inked up half of him okay so it kind of takes away the look of that christmas tree but you guys it's so fun to be able to use this for a lot of non-christmas projects it really like to me you guys know I talk about this all the time. Um, I love making my dollar stretch a long, long way. I love, love, love that. So um, if I can get um, multiple uses out of something, um, then I'm going to do that. And so maybe we will do the little, re we'll rescore this card really quickly again before we start gluing things down. That would be really helpful, Suze. So let's get that crease really um, really crisp and in the center now. So our stenciled piece is going to go just about a quarter of an inch from the left side there. Um, we are going to doodle when we're completely finished with this. We'll doodle around the edges, um, but don't worry about doing that now. Then we've got our little acorn strip here in the middle. This is one of my, this is a version of one of my all-time favorite card designs. And project number six in this kit is a version of one of my all-time favorite card designs. I tweaked them a little bit over the years, um, but I just love them. I love, love, love them. It's just so fun because it's a great way to use up some of those smaller pieces that you may have left over in your paper packs and get a few more projects out of them. Um, without, you know, it, sometimes when you find yourself just using scraps on a project, um, sometimes there's this like happy spot where, um, it looks like just enough. 
it doesn't look like, you know, you're only using scraps. And so it's really, really like sparse, right? Sparse. Um, this is a great way of really filling up the majority of the card base um, with really just small, teeny, tiny pieces of paper um, in various sizes, right? Like the one that we're going to put together in project number six um, have much smaller scraps, if you will, than this one. But this one works really great if you have some of those longer strips of paper for sure. So now um, we're going to go ahead and stamp really quickly. You can see down here, we've got uh, the for all you do. We've got our thankful, grateful, blessed. Um, that's going to be up here in the focal area, but then we've got the for all you do. And if you guys are looking at your stamp set, uh, you have a lot of different options on here that are smaller um, sentiments to kind of finish out um, that thought, right? So you've got your large focal and then down here, you've got the smaller one. And so you have multiple, like you've got so much for you, for all you do, for all the ways you brighten my day, um, for all of the... Let's see, I can't hardly even read that because my stamp is upside down for all of the cherished moments. Today and every day, I am for you. So you can see, you can take a lot of these different uh, larger sentiments, make them your focal image, and then take the coordinating um, smaller sentiments and kind of tuck them down back there underneath. And I feel like... I feel like it's completely adorable. I love it. But what I want to do is you guys know is that I like to stamp using a platform because I like to stamp multiple times to make sure I get a really good crisp image. Um, but I am not steady enough with my hands to be able to do that with a block. Now, our blocks are great. And if you guys are great at going back in and stamping um, the second time directly on top of where you stamped before, or if you don't even have to stamp a second time, which most of you don't, um, I sadly do, um, then you don't need a stampy platform. And our blocks are great, but I just really struggle in that regard. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I can get my small sentiment down here lined up underneath where my little mink square is going to go and so we are just gonna grab um, a little pencil and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, draw a little line here now um, do not worry because all we're gonna do when we're done stamping is we're just gonna um, put this mink piece on top of it so we don't even have to worry about um, erasing it but I am going to stamp directly on top of this plaid piece here and the toffee cardstock. Now, um, I usually can get a fairly good, um, a fairly good stamped image, but you guys want to make sure that you don't have too much of a height difference. Like if you have, um, a, like maybe you um, cut it with the trimmer blade and it kind of gives you that little lip. Um, make sure you're not stamping on top of that. You want to make sure that it's all really, really flat. And if you have concerns about that, one great way to make sure that it's really flat is you can take your bone folder and just go over that a few times. and It'll kind of break those fibers down. And you guys know what I'm talking about when I say on a, with a paper trimmer, you have that little lip. Um, because a lot of paper trimmers, or a majority of them that I have ever used, when you go and you run your blade this way, when you flip the paper over, there's always of where we have cut. And so that is what we kind of want to prevent, right? So make sure that you don't have any uneven surfaces there. And now again, I'm telling you, my platform is dirty. I need to get my Norwex cleaning paste out and um, clean it up. But until then, this will work just fine, okay? So we're gonna grab our For All You Do. And again, it's kind of hard to see because it's upside down. Um, you can see them really well, even if they're all good and stained. If they're right side up, because they match where the writing is on the carrier sheet. But if you're like me and you get in a hurry and you're not really paying attention and you just slap them back on there, then it's a little challenging to see them because they are kind of working against each other on the sheet there. So I'm going to move it um, where it's centered in between the edge of the plaid and the edge of the um the acorn. I keep wanting to call it toffee. Um, and so we're going to pick it up now and we'll grab our black ink pad and add a little bit of ink there. And who knows, maybe we'll get it done um, perfect on the first time. We'll just have to see. If not, yay for the platform and we can go back in multiple times. So I'm going to make that a tiny bit bolder. I tell you, um, stamping did not used to be something that I really enjoyed because many times I would make a blunder and then going back through and stamping it a second time to kind of fix that blunder. I'm really great about not inking my ink pads correctly where they're not really bold and crisp and juicy. And so um, that is one of the issues I would always run into. And I didn't have a perfect image. 
and it would frustrate me. And, you know, there was a time in my career, I just didn't really do much stamping at all. Um, and so I feel like a stamping platform, while it's nothing that is in our catalog, you know, it's nothing that close to my heart is manufactured or anything like that. Um, I feel like using a stamping platform has helped me fall in love with stamping probably for the first time because I, I have better stamped images now um, than I ever did. And so I've never um, appreciated stamping the way that I appreciate it now. So um, maybe if you guys are kind of struggling with maybe not liking stamping or not um, appreciating your stamped images, maybe they have a little bit of imperfection and you don't really like that, um, I encourage you give a stamping platform a try. I have been told that some people in the past um, have used DVD cases. Now I have never personally tried that, but if you don't want to invest in a stamping platform and you want to give a try, you may be able to make that work. Again, no no tips whatsoever on that because I've personally never used one, but um, I'm told that that is a good substitution. <laughs> and I apologize, guys, for the ink all over my hands. Um, I didn't even think to go wash them um, before turning the camera on, so there's that. Um, so now what we're going to do, we are done with our stamping portion, so now we can go ahead and continue building our cards. So um, we've placed our, um, our glitter frame around the outer portion of our mink here and um, use a little bit of that barely art glue that I was raving about in the first video of the month. I like that glue, man, you guys is awesome. So I'm kind of staggering this a little bit. If you want to line up your mink piece with your pattern paper, you can. Um, it's about the same width, but I wanted to offset it a little bit. I wanted to be able to see a little bit of my stenciling over here and have it overlap into this white space over here. Again, you guys, these are these are like little tiny bitty details that you don't need to stress about. Um, if you guys want to assemble your card and make it look different than mine, oh, for goodness sakes, please do that. Um, it'll look lovely, I'm certain. And so um, you you do it your way, okay? It's your kit and you just enjoy it. I have to tell you that I do envision when I think about um, sending all of these happy mails every single month, I do envision um, them going to like maybe tired and overworked and underappreciated mamas and maybe you have your littles into bed and um, you have a few minutes to yourself, you know, after the dinner dishes are cleaned up or whatever, or maybe sometimes you like leave the dinner dishes there to take care of themselves later. Um, no one can blame you there. Just saying, okay. Um, but I have envision of you guys sitting down at your table in the quiet and kind of unwinding from the day and putting together the kit. I love that. And that's probably not how it happens. Um, some of you guys are like, Suze, I haven't put one of these together in months. I can't find the files. Can you send them again? I'm going to a crop this weekend. <laughs> so if that's how you put them together, that's okay too. But um, I do have envision that maybe it is um, a way of blessing some of you guys who are maybe overworked and underappreciated. <laughs> so, um, so now what we're going to do is I am going to... Again, you guys know what I do. I like to kind of check this placement... Make sure that everything is kind of sitting where it needs to sit before I smush any of the adhesive down, okay? So my adhesive, my foam tape's on the back, but the backing is not off, so I can move it around. I have put Tombow down on my big leaf. We're going to go ahead and place our, um, take our foam tape off of there, and then we're going to kind of figure out where we're placing our small leaf, where it looks really complimentary um, on on top of the big one. So this is kind of like what we did in the first video where the leaf is kind of covering up some of those bigger words. Now, I don't want my leaf to cover up some of the smaller words because the smaller words are so small, it would cover up the whole word. And then obviously that's difficult to tell what the sentiment says if you're missing words, a little challenging. Um, however, these letters are so large that the leaf can cover up a portion of them and you can still tell exactly what the word is supposed to be. So um, I mentioned that so that you guys know that you can absolutely kind of overlap that little leaf onto that bigger, onto that uh, sentiment there and it'll be just fine, I promise, okay? So what I'm gonna do also is I am going to place this one over top here, which means that to make my elements 
flush, okay, so they don't get smushed when they're in an envelope, right? Um, I need to put Tombow up here on this part that's touching this already lifted up portion that has the foam tape underneath it. And then I need to put foam tape over here and foam tape over here to make sure that it all sits up flush and you don't have a piece that's going to get crushed and get smushed down to the bottom part of the card. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of Tombow up here on the middle, and then we're going to grab our foam um, tape over here and I'm going to add a tiny piece on either edge. Okay. So I'm not smushing those down much either because I want to make sure that this is going to fit like snug as a bug up here. If not, I may have to readjust my foam tape. So let's just make sure that this is going to, oh, that's perfect. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So now we can take the backing off because it, we did it for, we did it perfect on the first shot. Okay. That doesn't happen very often. Okay. So now that Tombow is going to stick on top of that E part of the E and part of the D there. And we're just kind of, um, just kind of staggering it just a little tiny bit. And since we put the foam tape there on either edge, now our leaf is completely flush. And so it is not going to get smushed. Now your little tail here, um, most likely whenever it gets in an envelope is going to kind of fold down, but there is no adhesive on the bottom of the tail. So the tail is not going to get, um, stuck to the card. It's going to pop right back up whenever you take it out of the envelope. So that's a great um, way to kind of handle that. So now let's grab our beautiful, 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 brown gems they may be gold they may be copper I don't know I stinking love 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 them whatever they are I mean love them we have needed brown dots for a long time um, when they introduced the colorful dot line um, a few years ago in the annual catalog I thought my gosh they got every single you know bit of the color palette um, except for something that's brown. And we have a lot of brown. We use a lot of brown in our paper lines and that kind of thing. And so uh, we were needing some brown dots. So I hope that we have these for a very, very long time. Um, so we've added a few of those. Again, it is just such a pretty um, bit of embellishing on the top and the bottom of the card to kind of um, bring a little bit of that cohesiveness um, together. It's beautiful, you guys. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. And I would not hesitate to give this to a man. I'm just saying. Um, some of you guys don't like to give glittery things to um, males, and that's okay. But I, I certainly think that this would be an appropriate card to give to a man. Now, what I would do next time now, and I'm not going to do it because the video is already a little long, is I would take my doodling pin and I would run all the way around the outer edge. And you can see um, we are popping from the pattern paper and the cardstock all the way down to the white card base. So you've got a little bit of, um, of a height difference. So just be aware when your pin gets to that part that you just uh, take it slow and be cautious so that you don't end up with like a, a, a squiggle that you didn't want there. Okay. So that would be the last and then we would call those two good, okay? So um, if you guys want to see uh, project number one and two and project number five and six, go and look at either whether you're watching this on the Facebook page or whether you're watching this on the YouTube channel, um, you can find the other videos there as well. So thanks so much for joining me, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.